Hey, good morning guys. Arnold Baker here with Overland Explorer Vehicles out of Red Deer, Alberta, Canada. We're down at uh, day three of Expo Mountain West. Great turnout. The weekend's been fantastic. The weather's been even better. Uh, I'm here with Braxton. Braxton's, I'm just going to give you a little walk around our camper. Not just our camper, but our Aluma tray. We designed and built this Aluma tray specifically for our flatbed version camper, the Hudson Bay edition, or the HBE for short. But we also had a customer that came forward and said, you know, darn, I already have one of your Camp X's, and I really like the flatbed, and I need more storage. Is there anything you can do? So we designed what we refer to as the X boxes that go underneath the shoulder here of the camper. So you can actually use the Camp X or the Hudson Bay with this. And this gives you a ton of extra storage if you elect to go with the Camp X. So a few features about the tray itself. It's all aluminum. It's powder coated in-house. The actual bed of it is actually a urethane uh, polyurea kind of Linex coating. Um, further in the, into the headache rack here, you got two locking doors. Under bed tray storage is four boxes. They're all keyed the same as well as your headache rack. Those come standard with the camper. And as I said, these X side boxes, of course, are options should you decide to go with the Camp X. But in here is where you would store the foldable stairs. We'll look at those foldable stairs in a few minutes as we go around the back of the camper. But nice and secure, stored, stowed away, lock them up, nobody's gonna steal them. Up here, you can stow stuff like um, uh, max tracks or maybe tables. Uh, it depends on what, what kind of gear you got and what you wanna do. This particular one, uh, they just put this on here and they haven't made a modification to the exhaust system tip here. So the mud flaps aren't on this, but it does come with mud flaps and a stainless weight at the bottom with our logo. Coming around the rear, we've actually gone to uh, LED round lights for the, for the tray. Unfortunately, supply chain being what it is, we weren't able to supply this one with that, but he's actually got them in the shop. He'll be swapping them out after Expo. But also here, there's another feature we have. It seems to be quite popular. Uh, it's, just a, it's just a sliding drawer. It's 39 inches long. You can store items like firewood, whatever, whatever extra stuff you need to store. And then it's actually locked in position. You can actually, if you've got the HBE on here, of course, this would be the rear of the camper. The HBE has a side entrance door. You could actually use this for grilling. You could also do the same here, but it's kind of, it's a little more challenging, of course, with the rear entry door on the camp, uh, door on the camp X. But again, all lockable, keyed the same. Coming on to the headache rack here, you can option it with either gas and or diesel. So with the diesel, if it's a, it's with a, a late model diesel truck, you also got the uh, def fill as well. So can, uh, that can be optioned. And then we switch over to the camper here. Uh, the Camp X is our sliding camper, six foot eight, front to back on the floor. It's for your full size trucks, not, not intended for an eight foot uh, bed, more for a uh, six foot, six and a half foot bed. Up here you've got, on the driver's side, a 20 pound horizontal uh, propane tank. And you can also stuff some other items in there as well. It's a washout tank. We get this from the emergency service uh, background that we've got. Uh, these are called washout, uh, washout cabinets. So you can actually wash them all out and the water just comes out. You've also got your Sagiv outside shower connection. A lot of people also refer to this as a bullfinch. It's more popular as a bullfinch. Uh, than actually Sagiv. Sagiv is actually uh, made in Israel. Lockable H2O for your fresh water, shore power connection and portable uh, solar connection as well. There is a, an optional solar panel. We use a 200 watt uh, solar panel. Uh, you can actually, with the Camp X, it is a manual lifting roof. So keep weight in mind when you're, you're lifting and also bringing the roof closed. So, Two solar panels, I would never go more than that. 400 watts seems to be plenty anyways uh, for what, this, what you've got to power inside the camper. These brackets that you see up here, they're designed for an outdoor shower cube like the Alucab shower cube or Kinsman or there's a number of different manufacturers. If we back up and look on this Camp M, you can see basically what we're talking about. Then coming more this way towards, towards the rear, all the appliances that we use in all of our products are state-of-the-art, the newest that's on the market, most reliable as well. We want to make sure that we got reliable product. So in, for heating water and for heating the uh, cabin air, we've gone with Truma with the Vario heat and also the Truma AquaGo, continuous hot water. So the nice thing about the AquaGo, again, it is continuous, but it's also got a, a secondary mode 
where it'll actually stay in the comfort mode and it'll actually maintain a temperature for you so you have an instant hot water. There's a little tiny reservoir about 0.3 liters, about 300 mil. So in regards to securing the camper to our trays, we use the torque lift uh, Derringer latches, these tie downs. What we really, really like about these, cam or these tie downs for the campers is that they've got jam nuts top and bottom. So once you get them adjusted for the corner that they're at, you can actually identify them with a felt marker as to which corner they're for. But also, because they're spring loaded, and once you adjust them to that corner, you don't have to adjust them again. So you can take it off road with the confidence knowing that Oh uh, darn, I, I, don't have to check, I don't have to check my turnbuckles uh, tomorrow or the next day or anything like that. Or you don't have to worry about breaking a turnbuckle because again, this is spring loaded. There are fronts and rears. They got a different spring load for the front and the rear application. So all we're doing is we're just going into the corner bracket that is also meant for the jacks when you're removing the camper. All we're using is a different adapter here for the camper. Now for if you've got a truck and you're not going with the bed, what you can do is go with our truck bed mounting kit. So if you look on this Ranger, it's got a couple of ears on, on each side of the rear here. That's, going, that's indexed right into the truck frame itself. And that's how we do it. On the front, there's actually a mounting bar, a, ma a mounting plate rather, that uh, the camper will actually butt up against. There's actually a rubber mount, so to butt up, butt up against there. So you're not gonna get any kind of rubbing. And that entire mounting plate mounts direct to frame. So bolted right to the frame. So you're not using any kind of washers or something like that to bolt down your camper or using going into the, the factory locations, your tie downs, because oftentimes those are underrated. We, that's why we like to go right direct to frame. It's very important. So again, you got the confidence. You're going off road because these Derringer uh, torque lifts are spring loaded. It allows the camper to move around. So if your chassis is doing this, it allows the camper to do that because even with all the adhesives that we talked about before, they all stay very elastic. They've got elastic properties, so everything's moving and we want to keep that moving. We don't want to have everything rigid locked down. This will always find its way back to center. Whatever it's set at, if your camper moves when you're off-road, it's going to find its way back to center. Yeah, coming back to the rear of the camper, you can see this one here. The owner has opted to use some stainless step downs. We only offer that with the option of the roof rack. This one does not have the roof rack, but up on the roof, and it's really challenging for, to, to capture it in video here, there's three sections of the L track one at the very back, one mid, and one front on each side of the camper. So the roof rack that we make, it's all aluminum, it's actually eight inches high, so it's designed mainly for canoes. Also back here, you're gonna find our OEV uh, molly racks for the driver's side and for the passenger side. Those of course are options. The doors are really interesting. They're really good products. Um, we're quite impressed with them in that. It's just the quality of it that we really, really like. You got brass bushings on the hinge, for example. It's not your traditional RV door. And also you got this grid pattern. At first I wasn't sure what to think of it because it kind of blocked your view, but if you hit it, you don't have to worry about smashing and, and wrecking your screen over time. As a builder, we like to use premium products because these, these campers are designed for off-road use. And that's what we design it solely around. So we don't use wood. Even in the structure of the camper, it's all composite, which I'll get into. But for now, we'll just focus on the, uh, on the furniture. The furniture, cabinetry, it doesn't matter if it's our Camp M for a midsize, our Camp X for the full size, our HBE, our base camp, our summits, it's all the same. It's aluminum, powder coated aluminum. And it's in different gauges depending on the application. The countertops themselves, we use a, uh, a marine grade plywood papered on the bottom. It's the only wood that you're gonna find in this camper is on the table and the countertop itself. For the Camp X and the HBE, you've got a two burner gas stove, cooktop rather, and a sink, both with flip down glass count, uh, tops. Going down further, uh, you got, as you can see here, this is elevated on the dinette floor. And we do that so you can actually have some shoe storage. So you're not cluttering up the aisle here with shoes and boots and things like that. Just kick them underneath here. It's, it's actually quite nice. This table does fold down. So with the back cushions down, you actually get 65 inches, or pardon me, six foot five inches of room north south by 38 inches to the wall to here is your narrowest uh, narrowest point. So it's actually a decent sized bed. So you can actually use that 
if you're boondocking and you don't want to open up the roof or something like that, if, if you're in an unsecure area or something like that. Also inside here, we the dual pane acrylic window. Uh, that's a really nice feature. It's nice and large. You can get a nice cross breeze going with it. And of course, it's got the pull-up blind, pull-down screen. Into our back control center here, all of our doors and drawers, uh, you don't see the drawers in this particular model, but you would in our HPE base camp and or summit. The, the doors and drawer fronts are, are a product called Starboard. Uh, it's a polymer. And again, we don't like to use the wood here only because of environmental cycling. Hot to cold, dry to moist. So you, you're not gonna worry about uh, swelling, cracking, that sort of thing. Also, this interesting fact is that it's actually food safe. So you can actually use it for a cutting board if you wanted to. So we have, again, have our control board here, control panel, and inside everything is nicely kept in terms of all the wiring, all the plumbing. We're using the high temperature and low temperature uh, PEX. So for winterizing is a breeze, you can actually bypass your, your aqua go. We've also got valves to the uh, outside shower. So should you decide to use this three season and you're worried that you might get into some uh, colder temperatures, you can winterize your camper then isolate that outside shower port and then you can actually reintroduce water into your camper if you so desire and not worry about traveling and freezing and, and breaking that port. So little things like that, we've, we've tried to take everything into consideration when doing it. Back at the control panel, we also have uh, aligned ourselves with another good product, Red Arc. Red Arc's out of Australia. In this camper, the Camp X, the HBE, we use the Manager 30. And what the 30 stands for is 30 amps, whether it be solar, uh, coming from your truck's alternator, or from shore power. It's only gonna allow 30 amps to go to your house battery in the camper. Our campers are set up for virtually any type of battery. You don't wanna use a battery that's going to vent for obvious reasons. You don't wanna blow yourself up. So an AGM, sealed AGM, and or lithium iron. Lithium iron seems to be a really popular choice. But getting back to the Red Arc, we chose the Red Arc because it's very small. And not only very small, it does a lot of things. It's your solar controller, it's everything built right into one component. That one lives right back here. So it's nice and close to the battery run because the batteries sit down. There's a slide out tray right down here underneath the seat. You slide out your batteries. So it's got a really nice short path because you're using some pretty, pretty sizable cabling uh, going up to that Red Arc. We are also evaluating uh, Red Arc's new product, Red Vision. Uh, if we end up doing that, it will probably be offered as a premium upgrade for a power system. But again, we're just in the evaluation process of that, so nothing, nothing to talk about that yet. Uh, we're looking forward to testing that out this fall. As far as keeping your, your, your beverages and your food cold, uh, we have two options. Standard for 2022, it does not come with a fixed fridge. That is an option. It's a 65 liter Dometic compressor style fridge which sits right here. It's in its own cabinet, has the same countertop, sits at this height. So if you wanted to have a king bed extension, the mattress would just come over top of here and over top of the fridge cabinet and, and away you go. As far as if you want to go with a portable fridge, the owner of this one is elected to remove the seat cushions in the rear and position the, the, the ARB cooler back here, which is an option. We actually, at the factory, we make provisions for it to sit right here. It seems to be, dual purpose you can do you can do either um, it's really neat having it at the back if you don't have kids and you don't need the bed space it's really quite nice at the back actually but if you need the bed space that's different for 2022 for sleeping I should mention that we're gonna have actually have a gurney style bunk here and what I mean by gurney style is just gonna be a couple of poles with the canvas so if you got small children um, they can sleep up on that one down on the bottom one up on top of that and then when you're in day use you actually roll it up and you set it up on top of the bed here. This particular camper for sleeping is set up with our king bed extension. So you've actually got a queen bed standard, but if you're wanting to sleep north, south, and not crawl over each other, you would just slide this back. So in travel mode, it's actually notched. These, uh, these uh, side mounts are actually notched forward and back. So in travel mode, it's not gonna come sliding off. And it's aluminum as you can see there. So if you wanted to use that, you would just lift it up pull it forward and keep going until it falls into the notches and then drop in the additional mattress. 
the owner of this camper has not done that. Uh, he doesn't even have his extra mattress in the camper right now. So now we can talk about the construction. Uh, we can talk about the camper itself. We use three different types of composite panels in our campers because every composite has a, its own purpose and its own duty. So in the floor, for example, it's a um, polypropylene honeycomb and it's inch and a half thick because we're just looking for structural uh, integrity. That's really all we're looking for. We're not really looking for thermal, even though it does have some thermal properties. We're not looking for sound attenuation. We're just looking for strength. And that's what we use there. On top of that, in the camper, what you see is a product called Lawn Seal. It's antimicrobial and antibacterial. It's used in uh, government buildings, hospitals, anywhere you got really high traffic. It's a heavier product to use, but it's very durable. We, we, we believe in it. We really, really like it. It works well. Uh, coming up onto the, the side walls of the camper, it's our proprietary own uh, composite panel. It's actually made in the United States. We designed it ourselves. But um, it, it, it's a, a fantastic product in that we wanted to engineer out delamination, which is inherently uh, a problem with, with some composites. Some builders decide uh, rather than figuring out a way around delamination, they figure out a way to repair it. But we wanted to just figure out a way around it. So that's what we've done. On either side, it's fiberglass uh, going in, then it's honeycomb polypropylene on both sides, and then the center core is actually foam. Now the foam, it's um, made out of recycled water bottles. So that's a plus, we get to actually repurpose uh, water bottles. So that's nice. Going up further into the uh, soft wall itself, the soft wall has three layers to it. The inside is a fire rated canvas. Then you've got a center insulative fill. And then on the outside is a product made by Top Gun. It has the highest UV rated nylon out of any marine outside fabric. And uh, it's a coated nylon. And it, it, of course, needs some maintenance from time to time, at least annually. Uh, you should use a Top Gun spray just to, to recoat it, uh, even on your vertical threads. Uh, we encourage people to visit our website because there's, there's different types of silicone sprays. There's some nanotechnology, a lot of things that you can actually use. We don't use a thread that actually swells when it's exposed to water because that same thread is not UV stable. Therefore, over time, you're going to have a premature failure with it. So rather than that, we just elect to go with the different uh, coatings for the outside and it works really, really well. The roof itself is an FRP skin on both sides and it's uh, an EPS foam. And we use the EPS foam, it gives us some R value, but more importantly, it gives us a lightweight roof. Our roof on a Camp X is about 140 pounds um, without the fan and without the solar panel on it. The lightweight uh, characteristics are super important because it is a manual lifting roof, manual lifting and then also coming down. So, so we always tell folks, you know, what goes up must come down. So keep that in mind. If you like to go with a roof rack or something like that, you're going to want to unload it prior to um, raising your roof. Uh, if you've got snow load, you're going to want to take care of that stuff too, as well, uh, prior to coming down, taking the roof, roof down. Now, again, this is only marketed and advertised as a three season camper. I just mentioned snow load. But people, uh, for whatever reason, are, are using this, stretching it out into four seasons where possible. And in some parts of the country, you're able to do that. So we fully encourage it. Uh, the water's the only concern with freezing. So as long as you're mindful of that, you'll have no problem. At the top of the wall, this outside wall here on the camper, there's an aluminum extrusion that goes around the entire perimeter. So there's a thermal path because that extrusion wraps the, whole the, the entire wall. Now, uh, the way that we combat that is we use a product called Eva Foam. It's hydrophobic, so it won't absorb water. And it's also fire rated, so if you actually hold a flame to it, it's certainly not going to catch. It'll smoke, but it won't catch. But that's pretty much it for the inside. I'd like to talk to you outside about the uh, exoskeleton on the outside walls. So all of our extrusions are our own proprietary extrusions. We own the, die, we own the dies, so we get the extrusions made specifically for us. Although I wish we could just buy it off the shelf, we couldn't, so we had to design everything ourselves. So it's all powder coated. So wherever you, uh, you have a horizontal wall meeting a, another wall, vertical wall, whatever it is, we use this exoskeleton. So the important thing here is everything is bonded together. You come to a corner cap, you'll see some rivets here. These are aluminum rivets. Uh, the only time we will actually use any rivets is when we're connecting metal to metal. We also use some adhesive behind there as well. But one thing that's really important, this is three inch by three inch on this exoskeleton. 
So when we were actually doing all of our testing for adhesives uh, a few years back, and we continue to test new adhesives as they become available, we found that the adhesive that we settled on for our product at about 64 to 6600 pounds, you'll actually start to get some separation. Not necessarily the adhesive itself, it's sort of like a metal weld. It won't fail at the, the adhesive joint itself, but typically right beside it. That's where you get your failure point. But however, it takes, before you're actually gonna get any kind of separation of that adhesive, we're talking 64 to 6,600 pounds, uh, which is incredible. That's that's that incredible amount of uh, pressure. So when we're bonding these things up, for every lineal inch you move, whether it be horizontal, horizontal or vertical, for every lineal inch, you've got nine square inches of bonded surface. So getting back to that testing, so on every 12 inch by one inch, it would take that 6,400 to 6,600 pounds to get separation or failure. So now you do the math. For every lineal inch, you've got nine square inches. It's tons. So if, actually, if this starts to come apart, I'm afraid you've likely been in a horrific accident and um, I, ho I hope you're okay. But should you do some damage to the skins of the uh, panels, uh, we call this the Corvette finish. You can take this to any collision center and they'll be able to fix this up for you right away. No problem. And then I, I think it's important also to note on our corner caps that are especially up here, either side, because on the other, on the passenger side, it's also set up for a um, 270 degree awning, whether there's so many different awnings available. So we made it, tried to make it as universal as possible. We designed around the Alucab 270 because it seems to be the most robust ones that one would be been able to find because most people will actually roll it out and not use the actual leg. There's one leg that's actually included with the awning and normally they don't use it. So it puts a lot of force right at that hinge point of that awning, which is right at the corner on the other side. So we made sure, or pardon me, right here at the corner of the back, right, rather, on the other side. Um, so we made sure that it's extremely strong. A lot of people ask us, what about the bed? How much weight can the bed hold? So as you notice, we don't have any kind of gusset here uh, to support the bed. In testing that we've done, we set this entire setup onto a bench and we, we just did worst case scenario. So we didn't do all the correct uh, procedures that we normally use for putting our extrusions onto panels. We didn't sand, we didn't clean, no priming, no nothing. We just put on the adhesives, put everything together, let it cure, and then we came back. So right here is your actual fulcrum. We had a hydraulic press at this end, and we're actually pushing down right on the end. And it took just over a thousand pounds before we started to see deflection right at the fulcrum here on the side, on the side walls. Now, when we did that testing, that was a couple years ago, that was with our Gen 3 panels, which was a urethane foam core. We've got, again, we've gone, to the, um, we've gone to a different foam core now, which is actually stronger than the urethane that we used in the past. Also, with these new corner caps right at this point at this fulcrum on both sides, we've redesigned this corner caps. They actually tie into that top of the wall extrusion. So that wasn't as part of the test. So that's also added additional strength. So we're gonna do another test. I'm, we're hoping to do it this winter, check it out again, because again, the new panel and the new way of doing our corner caps, and we'll probably set it up so we actually do everything together uh, correctly in our, in our build out, like sanding, cleaning, priming, whatever we're doing. And then we're gonna test it again. We're gonna get a pool going. My guess is about 1,375 pounds before we start to see deflection here. And again, that's right at the very end or the very north end of the camper you're not gonna put a thousand pounds there. So it's completely safe. It's not gonna come apart. You have nothing to worry about. Our roof to go up and down, we had the springs, we had the uh, hinges inside. They were actually spring assist on those hinges themselves. Those springs were actually made for us to, uh, to the specifications that we require. We also use gas struts. The gas struts are only there for assist. They're not gonna do all the work for you, but it's actually pretty easy to take it up and take it down. Uh, you just gotta be very careful in bending bend of the knees, keep your back straight, that sort of thing. It actually goes up and down quite easily. So um, most people, doesn't matter what demographic, most people have no issues at all. That pretty much sums it up. If you have any questions, please uh, reach out to us at our factory in Red Deer, Alberta, Canada. You can reach us, uh, get our contact information via our website or any one of our dealers off our website. You can actually locate a dealer, get in touch with those guys. Uh, any one of them is a valuable source uh, or resource for information and not just for information on our camper these guys are also very good at what they do this particular rig that you see here is uh, 
built uh, in Frederick, Colorado uh, by BVO and it's one of the owner's rigs but they do all the suspension work, they do all of the accessories, um, they'll really make sure they'll just not just sell you a, a kit where it's uh, yeah this is what you need, no they'll take a look at the weight balance and all that stuff, they'll take a look at your chassis because every year is different, it seems every generation of truck is different and there's also different suspensions and things like that that are coming out all the time. So they're right on top of things, they're in always in good communication with their other vendors in regards to that sort of thing. So if you got any questions, by all means, get a hold of us, man. We'd love to talk to you.